Hey there, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. Hey guys, it's Kieran Wood here from Order, uh, Head of Sales Operations for uh, International Sales. Craig Hypes with Order, Distinguished Engineer. You guys, it's really great to have you here. It's you know, it's day four of Cisco Live, Mia. Um, it's my I've, I've said this much times. Everyone's probably getting tired of me saying this. Like, it's my first time overseas. It's like first time ever leaving really the United States wow. um, and getting to come, especially to Amsterdam. This has been an very cultural. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really loving to get out in the artwork and everything. And something that I noticed um, in the event specifically, there's a lot of topics that have been showcased at Cisco Live this year. But a top one, like one of the biggest priorities for Cisco as an organization, Rocky Side, Cisco, and all the products we have is security. Like yeah. securing things and you know that's a big topic there's a lot of nuance within it but I thought that would be a really good lead into sort of what order does how, how you do it and what, what the value prop is and we can kind of take it from there yeah yeah sure so I mean order as an, as an organization we are a cybersecurity vendor that's what we do uh, and what are the challenges that we solve so order as, a, as an organization if you think of security now uh, where does the borders of security sit now? It's no longer just uh, the standard enterprise network. So we're very much around asset visibility across the whole infrastructure. And this is not just traditional IT or people, what people perceive as traditional IT. If you think of your, your own home environment now, uh, five, 10 years ago, I don't know how technical you are, but I'm certainly not as technical as Craig. So the number of devices just in my own home network has grown exponentially over the last five, 10 years. You know, five years ago, I probably would have had two or three IP IP enabled devices. Now in my own home environment, I've got ring doorbells, I've got CCTV, I've got skyboxes, PS5s, this, that, God knows what else. And that's just in a home environment. So when you take an enterprise network, yes, you've got traditional IT, which is managed by IT and agent based technology. And you've got all these other devices that are in a, an enterprise network, such as OT, IOT, IOMT, so the medical things, mm -hmm. all these different acronyms. So now security is, is essentially borderless. So what do we do as an organization? So we're all about the connected device universe and that sort of attack surface management and vulnerability remediation. So the first part of the order journey is, is the C part of what we, you know, our marketing message, and you, we have three very distinct pillars, which is C, know, and secure. So the first part is see every asset and what, you know, whether that be an IT traditional asset, agent-based, non-agent-based, managed, unmanaged, IT, OT, IoT, any IP-enabled device on a network, we will find it, we will classify it, tell you what that device is, what vulnerabilities are against that device that we know about, and also that device, if we've seen it before, just take a CCTV camera that we've previously profiled, is that acting in a, in a traditional sense, or is it actually, is there abnormal activity from that device? And then based on that information from the C and the no, we can then proactively remediate security vulnerabilities by you know, enforcing segmentation, zero trust um, segmentation. And we do that by leveraging things like the Meraki architecture, by working with things like Cisco ICE and Mac products and firewall products and Seam, et cetera. So that's very much the journey of orders, that, that whole C, no, and secure, every asset and every connection. Absolutely. And one of the things I, I, I really pulled out of what you were, talk, you were discussing there is um, it's, we talk a lot about automation. Like, yeah. Of course, we're in the DevNet zone, so that's, like the, that's, yeah, like, yeah, that's our course. bread and butter. But it's such a broad term. Yeah. And I think one, what I noticed in what you're describing is that it's all about we've got to contextualize the data that exists. Because you know, with Cisco, for years, you know, we, we work with customers to deploy things like ICE. Uh, we have other you know, ways of learning about network devices. And the challenge always had, ICE is a good example, it's such a powerful tool, but I, when I would work with customers when I was in an SE, one of the challenges that all customers always had is, that's great, I have all this information, but how do I process? What do I do with it? What do I do with this? How do I, how do I make the right yeah, decision? Yeah, we, we, we don't, as a technology, we, we don't want to be another flashy dashboard which has lots of bells and whistles and lots of alarms going off that add to the complexity and workload of our customers because they're all stretched, they're, they're under-resourced. Um, so we want to proactively remediate and automate as much as that process is possible, right. which obviously Craig can talk about. Yeah, and yeah. Craig, I'd love to hear from you, like, observe, clearly observability is sort of like a key of the, the, the data that's coming from these different things. How do you observe it and learn what those are to profile it and obviously do something with it at that point? Certainly. So we look at copies of the traffic. So things like span, tap, ER span, and by just looking at the traffic and being able to decode the applications and the protocols, we're able to get a lot of great information, and that's part of that automation. Because typically, in most environments, you'll see MAC addresses, you'll see IP addresses, and you'll have to do some type of manual classification sometimes from the bits and the pieces. 
Our goal is that fully automated, we will classify with high fidelity and get things like make, model, operating system, uh, things like uh, in healthcare, the DICOM title, things that you would not normally be able to get automatically and to automatically correlate those to security feeds so you can very quickly understand with high uh, levels of detail what's connected, where is it at risk, what's it doing. And so once you understand what the type of device is and you're able to baseline behavior for those specific devices in your environment, I can then say, even without segmentation, are they acting correctly within my peer group of that, those devices? And of course, the next thing is, well, if this represents the good behavior and we've taken out the bad behavior, it would be great to wrap a policy around that. So that's where the power and the integration of our Cisco, uh, the portfolio, to be able to say, let's take in information from sources like Meraki, from DNA Center, from Cisco ICE and other sources, and then feed it back out into those systems to say, this is exactly what's connected, and here's the policy, so that with pretty much a click of a button, if you want to say pure automation, to automate that segmentation policy using the power of things like Cisco ICE and SDA. So it's really been a great relationship, partnership with Cisco to be able to bring these additional benefits to our customers. It's really interesting how you how you have phrased the way that you're approaching the, the problem solving. Because so often when I so most of my career spent was a network engineer before I came to Cisco. Okay. And SE. So I the my background was click ops. <laughs> Type, you know, fingers fingers on keyboards typing things. Yeah. And I can remember that one of the hardest things we always had to deal with was there was there was never really a good middle layer in the layer eight space. <laughs> there was really never a good middle layer between myself as an engineer and a senior leader, someone who was like, what's happening, why is this happening, et cetera. And so there was, you were trying to translate the way they want to hear information and the way that I know how to communicate that information. And there's not really a good, there was never really a good layer in between for a long, long time. Um, or if there was, it was expensive tooling or it just, it was tough to do. And what you're describing, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but what you're describing a lot of is providing sort of that middle layer for everyone so that somebody is in a more leader, leadership role who is not there to be a technical person, but they're there to be a business decision maker right. and say, I want to know what is happening from like a contextual person basis because I need to make a business decision. Are we at risk? Is there something we have to do? Yeah. But so often what would happen is if those people were like, I think there's a problem, they would end up going directly to a, C, like a, a deep engineer and the engineer is going to give an engineering answer. But those two things don't, aren't, that's not always- Engineer and answer and business answer are very different. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and so I really appreciate that what you're doing is extending the capability of these different technologies yeah. so that it can, that a use case can be addressed rather than saying, we're giving you all of the things, we're giving you just the thing that you need, right. and then we can go do something. Like and Jeff, do you know what's been really valuable this week at Cisco Live? It's my first time at Cisco Live. and. Uh, Craig's been with Cisco previously, so you know we call him the Ice Man internally, <laughs> just because of his integral knowledge of Cisco and the whole architecture of Cisco. But you know, just speaking to so many different customers this week across different sized customers across different verticals, from large financial enterprise institutions to you know hospitals through to manufacturing facilities, when they actually see what we do and then how we integrate with things like Cisco Ice and Meraki. There was some real light bulb moments, and actually some of the conversations we've had on stand today is you've got your CISO, your, your CIO, and engineering team all looking at a demo, and they're, all the light bulbs are going on, and they're like, ah, oh, this solves that problem. You were making it more technical focused. This is the business justification. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the business issue. Now I can marry it up. Right. So there's lots of projects that people are going away from the show thinking, actually, Order and Cisco can help us here and yeah. deliver a lot of value in what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that is such a, such a positive way to look at it, yeah. where you can say a, a business leader of some kind, someone who is there to think about the business impact of a situation occurring, yes. can look at it all over simplify and say a dashboard, but whatever the, the visual construct is, they can look at that and say, I see three different sets of behaviors here. Some of this might appear on the surface negative, some may not, but one of these specifically is standing out to me. Well, now that person or that group of people could say, that's the thing we want our technical teams to go tell us what is happening that is generating this. And that creates almost almost the uh, the babble fish, so to speak, of like, now I, that babble fish can then translate to that person, oh, what you wanted to know is, why is that situation occurring? Is that really a threat? Is it really a bad actor? Or is that some other confluence of things that are occurring? Yeah, yeah. and I guess, you know, just a proof in point, one of the, an organization coming to see us this week, they're a large healthcare organization, and they, they had various people on the stand, and one of their problems is, they got all these medical devices that are coming into their infrastructure, 
they've got rudimentary operating systems. Some of them are still running Windows 7. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we know that we've got Windows 7 devices out there. We don't know where they are. We don't know how to manage them and protect them. So straight away, we're like, we could use order to find all of these devices on our network and then proactively segment them on the network. And then we can deal with those later on once we've maybe got budget. So that's a business decision. Right. Very clever business decision. So straight away, they can see the value in what we do. Awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, as we're right, uh, wrapping up, is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with, like how they can find the product, how they can work with your things, any sort of calls to action you really want them to go do right now to kind of take more advantage of these network, these uh, security platforms that they have? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just recommend that people, you know, go to www.order.net, so that's O-R-D-R.net. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us uh, and one of the team will come back to you. We're happy to... Uh, organize a, uh, a deeper dive demo on our, on our technology and, and talk about your specific requirements. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you both very much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Hope everyone Jeff. enjoys the rest of Cisco Live. You can find all the information about the event at developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live.